Welcome GDLers to another edition of Scripting Adventure. This is Bruce from Barking Dog Bim and today we're going to look at hotlines and hot arcs. Now I dare say that most of you who are watching this haven't heard of what those are, what they can do for you and why you should use them. So let's just get straight into it. Now with slabs or any other native Archicad element that is not an object, you get feedback from the intelligent cursor. So if I was to draw just a quick slab in here, let's round one of these corners at 80 and chamfer the other at 80 just to mimic our desktop. When I hover over an edge, I not only get my Mercedes cursor, I get guidelines popping up. I can snap to any of the corners, any edge. I get snap points along the halfway line according to my snap divisors and I get all the feedback I need to do my drafting and my modeling. With an object, you only get that intelligent cursor feedback at hotspots that you've defined. I don't get any edge feedback whatsoever, so no guidelines pop up. My intelligent cursor doesn't change makes it a lot harder to select and work with your objects. So this is where hot lines and hot arcs come into play. You can make your objects behave more like your other native Archicad elements. So let's open our object. I'll just use the shortcut, Control, Shift and O, or restore it down. I've already got my toolbar at the top here to work with. I'll open my 2D script. So hot lines and hot arcs, although they're also available in 3D, typically they're only worthwhile in 2D. I'll open my help under Help Documentation GDL Reference Guide. That will bring up the PDF version and the online version is at gdl.graphisoft.com and click on Reference Guide. Now you'll find hot lines and hot arcs under 2D Shapes and Drawing Elements. And we've got Hotline 2 here and Hot Arc 2 just below it. You'll see that the syntax is Hotline 2, X1, X2 as your starting coordinates and X2, Y2 as your ending coordinates and it must have a unique ID. You'll notice that none of these inputs are optional. You must declare them all. As a tip, Hotline 2 is almost exactly the same as the Line 2 statement. You see a little diagram here as to how it works. So let's see what that looks like. I'll just put it at the top here, just for the time being. We'll go hotline 2, will be 0, 0, we'll draw it along the bottom edge, and the X coordinate will be A, and the Y coordinate will be 0, and we'll have a unique ID. Now remembering from the last video, and from our dynamic hotspots down here, we will add this little line of code in front to make sure that the unique ID we use is indeed unique. There we go, we'll check our script. Script is okay. Save our object and check it in the plan environment. And we can see straight away, we've got some intelligent cursor feedback, my guidelines popping up. And that appears on all of the objects because I've declared it right at the top before any of the subroutines. But I don't have it, just turn off those guides. I don't have it on any of the other edges, just that bottom edge. So you can see as I hover over that bottom edge, I get my intelligent cursor feedback. I get a halfway tick. And you can see the endpoints too have been highlighted on screen. So it's a very useful thing to have. And I can select my object. So now we want to add these to the other four sides. I could do some sort of complicated loop, but in some instances it's just easier just to do the four different declarations and now I'll have the same coordinates as my hotspots. I'll declare these in the same order that we've declared our desktop outline. So we'll start at 0, 0, go to 0B, then from 0B, we'll go to A, B, and then from, which is the top right corner, and then from A, B, 
we will go to the bottom corner, which is A0. And then from the bottom corner, which is A0, we'll come back to 0, 0. Save that. And now I've got a hotline. I'll just turn on my snap guides. And you can see I get a snap halfway tick on every side now. I get an intelligent cursor on every side. I get snap guides, snap lines popping up. It makes my object behave more like the other native ARCHICAD elements. So that's good. That's exactly what we're after for the rectangular desktop. For the other two, we can see that our snap guides, our snap lines continue past our corner condition. So we can see here that they continue past. I don't get any intelligent cursor feedback on these edges here. So we need to be a little bit more sophisticated with how we apply these hot lines and hot arcs. So going back to our 2D script, what we'll do is in order to keep our script nice and clean and tidy, We'll put all the hotline and hotspot stuff down in the hotspot go subroutine. You'll also remember from the previous one that our go subroutine is only executed if we have these types of desktops. So we'll do a bit of changing to our script. We'll make this go sub execute every time unconditionally, and then we'll put that conditional statement down in the subroutine. So let's copy all of this stuff. Down here, we'll put them first. Let's get rid of this conditional statement and we'll put it down here. And what we'll do, so our hotspot subroutine is going to run every time. We want our hotspots to appear in the corner every time. We want our hotlines to appear for the entire desk edge only when it's desk type square, right? So we'll just copy this conditional statement here and we'll say if desktop equals dtype square then indent these because they belong to my conditional statement now and if. Then we want another series for the other two conditions. So for the desktop rounded corner and for the desktop chamfered corner we want to draw the lines shorter so that they account for the corners but they'll be the same lines for both of those types so we'll put in this conditional statement if it's one of these two then and if I'll close off my conditional statement before I start working on it then I'll put in these four Hotlines, instead of being from 0, 0, the first one will start at the Y coordinate of corner R, and it will finish at B minus corner R. So I'll just complete the coordinates for the other three sides. Right, so let's save this, have a look, see if I got it right. I've got my intelligent cursor and you see that the line is only as long as the side. And I'll just check the other four sides, three sides rather. There we go. They're all there. They are all the correct size. And my square desktop is still executing properly. So it's good. That's what we're after. Now I need to figure out what I'm going to do with the chamfers and the rounded edges. Let's do the chamfers first. So within this conditional statement, we'll go if desktop type equals D type chamfered, then I'll do my corners. Close off my conditional statement first. I will copy down a unique ID. Now hotline. So this will be the first corner, so it'll be corner R in the X, and it'll be 0 in the Y, and then the finish will be 0 in the X and corner R in the Y. And there's my unique ID. So let's just see if I got that right. Save it. 
and there we go it's working how I expected so I'll just finish out the other four I could do a complicated for loop but in this case I think it'll just be easier to hard code in the coordinates of the other three sides So there's my four corners. Let's check it again. And we can see by the guideline that I've coded this correctly. Now we get on to the curved corners, and this is where the hot arc comes into play. So if we look at that, we see that the hot arc has an X and a Y, an R, a start angle, end angle, and unique ID. And it's got some wordy words down there to describe what it means, but a clue is that the hot arc 2 has the same inputs as the arc 2, so we'll have a look at the arc 2. And we see here that the little diagram helps us understand what's required. X and Y is the center point of our arc. R is the radius. The first angle, the alpha or the start angle, is the angle from the x0 axis to the start of your radius, to the start of your arc, and the beta is the end angle measured from the x axis 0. So with that in mind, let's script our first curved corner. So we'll create another conditional statement down here for if desktop type equals rounded. Copy down our unique ID because we still need that. And the statement is hot arc 2. It's got our center point, which will be corner R, corner R. Our radius will also be corner R. Our start angle, remembering that the X zero axis is zero, so it'll be 90, 180 start, and it'll finish at 270, and we need our unique ID. Let's save it, see if I got it right, and there we go, and there's my construction line, my guideline pinged in place, and I've got a center point that I can use. I've got endpoints that I can use. So it's very handy to have. So I'll just do the other three corners. So there's my four corners. I'll save it and I'll see if I've got it right. That corner. That corner, you can see my center point is temporary snap point is springing up. So it's behaving a lot more like any other native ARCHICAD element. Now, I happen to get all these right, partly because it's a simple geometry, partly because I've done this a few times. Sometimes it's really difficult to get the coordinates right, especially with the arcs, and you can't always figure out where you've gone wrong. So a tip to figuring it out when you can't find where you've placed your hot arc or your hot line is to change the statement to the equivalent line to or arc to. And that's a very simple thing to do. So I'll do it with this arc to statement here and I'll just place it down here. This is the first corner. So I'll just add to minus B divided by two and I'll get rid of the unID. So what I've done here is I've just copied down my hot arc statement and I've changed it into an arc statement. And you can see that that's where the arc is. So once again, this is just a bit of a hack to help debug where you may have gone wrong with hot arcs and hot lines that you can't find. And I'll just get rid of that. So just to finish off this script, because I got rid of the conditional statement up at my subroutine call, my dynamic hotspots are back here, so I'll just need to add that conditional statement back into this subroutine. And what I'll do is I'll just place those hotspots inside 
my conditional statement here. So that way they'll only execute, this is my conditional statement here, this is the whole conditional statement, if desktop type equals rounded or chamfered, then it'll run through and add all these hot lines, hot arcs, and hot spots. There we go, they're gone from there, but they're still here. So let's change this, double check my hot arc. There we go, it's also updated to suit my new radius or my altered chamfer size on the corners. Well, that wraps up that part of the video. And although we've achieved our objective, we've got hot lines and hot arcs in our part working properly. You now know what they do. Our code, I think, is a little bit bloated, a little bit inefficient. And I reckon we can tighten up on our logic, make our code leaner and more streamlined, more efficient. So that's what I'd like to do now. So we've got our script here with all of our separate corners and lines declared as individual coordinate lines. Let's see if we can get them into the for loop so we only have to declare them once. So to do that, I'll start with my chamfered and I'll put it down, copy it down into our for loop here with an end if. And I'll copy the first corner so that I can see what's going on. I'll also create a line statement of the same. And I'll also just change the pen just for debugging purposes so that it's more visible and I can see what's happening. So we'll check our script. Script is OK. And we can see what's happened. We've got our four corners in place, but the ones on the far side still got the same orientation as the ones on the near side. I need to put in a mirror transformation, which I will do under my add here. So we've got mole to in the X, we want it to remain the same. It'll be a one. And in the Y, we want to mirror it. Now, because we've put an extra transformation in our transformation stack, I need to increase my deletions after the loop. So I now have two transformations in two iteration. So this will be del four. Save, have a look. There we go, that's working. And just double check to make sure that it is actually a hotline and it is. Good. So we'll do the same process with our rounded corners. And I'll just do it slightly differently. I'll just copy the whole thing, indent it twice and just delete out the lines I don't need. And again, copy down an arc statement. Right. Let's check our script. Oh, first of all, I might have been getting false positives. I just need to comment out where we've already done them up here. So they're no longer relevant. And there's my four curved corners and there's my four chamfered corners and they are hot. Hot lines, hot arcs. Excellent. So let's see how we can get our sides into this loop as well. I'll show you just a couple of variations on the same method, just to demonstrate that there's always multiple ways that you can solve the same problem. One way is not necessarily better than the other. There's always different ways to go about it. So one way is we know that we're going to the four corners. We're going one, two, three, four. If I do opposing L shape with my sides that will allow me to declare just the same line of code for each side. So I'll put it under the hotspots and I'll use the bottom in the X direction first, which is the last one, right? Paste that down to there and that will happen every four iterations. So we don't want it being placed four times. So we will say if J equals one, then execute this. And again, I'll put in my line so that we can visually see what's going on. Let's check our script. Not enough parameters, 98. Oops, I missed one, zero. Let's check our script, it's okay. And I should get a line at the bottom and the top. There we go, bottom and top. And they should be hotlines to make sure that I'm not getting a false positive. I'll just comment out where I've used them before. Hotline, hotline, 
hotline, hotline, good. And we will say if i equals one, then so i is one when it's at the bottom at either corner. And this one will be our vertical hotline, which will be starting at x at the zero. So it's this top one here. Again, let's copy a line across. Check our script. It's okay. So there we go. We've got our four lines for each corner. And I think that's a pretty good solution. Now to demonstrate that we're only doing the line once, I'll just put a little tweak in the line just so that you can see how the lines are placed. So what that shows me is that I'm not placing them once in J1 and then mirroring them and placing them again in J2. So they're just being placed the once. That's one way I could go about it. The other way is if J equals 1 and I equals 1, then we'll do our horizontal line and we'll do our vertical line. And we'll delete that. So that will place a corner L. So let's check our script. So let's place that one in the corner. And now we want the condition when it's at the top right. So that will be or J equals 2 and I equals 2. So I'll just put these in brackets so that I can read it. It's not required logically, but it does make it more legible. So there we go. That's another way that you can execute your logic to get the same result. And I can now delete these lines. So it's even tighter code now. wonder if there's a way that we can get the edges for the square desk in there as well. Now the problem we have is that the square desk edges are a different length to the others. Let's make these desks the same size. Let's make them one meter by 650. All the same size, so we can see. So you see that this edge here is going to be longer than that edge. How do we deal with that in our script? So what we'll do in order to achieve that is we create a temporary variable just for this subroutine. And because it's just for this subroutine, we'll lead it with an underscore. So we'll go hot x1, which is our hotline x coordinate 1 equals 0. We'll go hot x2, which is our finishing coordinate in the x-axis, and that will be A. We'll go hot y1 equals 0, and we'll go hot y2 equals B. Now, this highlights the fact that when I created these temporary variables, they should have an underscore. A Graphisoft style guide recommendation. So now all desk types need to go through our loop. So our conditional statement is not before the loop. It's now inside the loop. And what it's going to limit is the execution of our hotspots. So I'll put it in there. And if, and I need to get rid of the last end if down here. Now when it drops into this conditional statement, so if the desktop is D-type rounded or D-type chamfered, then I need to update all of my coordinates to be hot x1 will be corner r, x2 will be a minus corner r, y will be corner r, y2 will be b minus corner r. And then down here, I need to update these to be my temporary variables. Let's check our script. It's OK. Save the object. There we go. It works. Look at that. They're in the right place and the right length for the square desk. And they're in the right place and the right length for the other types of desks. Excellent. So now that I've done that, I can delete this. I get rid of my pen. Get rid of these lines. 
I'll put these back into their own if statements. Also, just a good habit is to comment some stuff. So these will be temp variables for edge lengths. Oh, and I've realized that these are just one indent too deep. So I'll bring them back. One last thing, then I'll be done. I'll shift one of these hotspots down into here. Delete these, save it. And I've still got my four hotspots and they still stretch my desk. So there's our finished subroutine, all nice and lean and clean. Well, that really wraps up this video now. So I hope you learned something and I hope you give it a go yourself. In the next video, I'm going to talk about the hide parameter statement and how you can hide or show parameters on the fly for the user, depending on what your object is currently doing. So I'll see you then.